Hi and welcome everybody to Vlog 33. My name is David Logan, the IT geek, the guy who takes jargon out of technology for the home office worker. Here we are in Vlog 33 on this week's video. Presenting with me today is Wally Nickel. So Wally, how are you and where are you? Thank you, David. I'm very well, thank you. I'm based in Trin, South East of Scotland. Fantastic. So we're both alive and kicking, although we can't see each other's feet. I think that is just a phrase I tend to use. Question for you, Willie. Is it true? I think this is a myth. But is it true that stress, when you're stressed, this can cause the common cold and or the flu? Good question, David. The short answer is yes. But naturally, I will expand on that. I'm going to differentiate between acute stress and chronic stress. I've said before that stress is a normal part of life. Um, keeps us on our toes, keeps us alert to danger and so on. So, perfectly acceptable. Acute stress occurs when there is an elevated element of stress and there's a danger and we react to it. I've talked about the fight or flight response. And we react to it, acute being short term. Once the, the stress shot is gone, we return to normal. Chronic stress, on the other hand, is long term, prolonged. It doesn't go away. So we are in a state of chronic stress when we have high levels of stress over a long, prolonged period. Now, you won't be surprised to hear I did some research to make sure I was not talking nonsense. And essentially, what happens with chronic stress at high levels is we've talked about cortisol before. It produces this um, chemical, which we now find can have a negative impact on our immune system. It can actually affect the production of what they call lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, which fight illnesses and disease. So prolonged excessive stress has a bad effect on our immune system, which affects its ability to fight illnesses, disease, and various other things. So it's not, I think, uh, a quantum leap to say that chronic stress over a long period of time, yes, can leave you susceptible to the cold or the flu. Good. So that was you saying acute stress and chronic stress. And yep. acute stress is short term? Yep. So is that like when you say you, you can't make payment for your next big purchase? Is that quite a good example? Well, we all know what problems. We all know what stress is, right? Um, acute stress is not necessarily a one-off thing, but it's a short-lived period of stress. Oh my goodness, I've left the cooker on at home, right? And you're halfway up the motorway. Or, I've said this before, I forgot to buy a birthday card for my mum. We get a wee bit stressed and anxious. Or it might be we're, we're trying to make a deadline, we're getting stressed about it because time's running out. But once that stressful incident has passed, we go back to normal. So we've gone through a period of acute stress for a short period of time. Chronic stress is when we find ourselves at a high level of stress all the time, when we're saying, oh, I'm so stressed out, right? And it's work, it's relationships, it's business, it could be anything, right? And we can't seem to reduce the stress levels. And we're living in a constant stressful demeanor, if you like. And that's when the chronic stress and the suppression of your immune system can lead to susceptibility to illnesses. And if it's particularly prolonged, you're looking at sleeplessness, um, digestive problems, heart problems, um, all sorts of not very pleasant things. So then it becomes crucial for us to manage our stress and to de-stress and reduce the levels of stress 
so that we're not leaving ourselves open to all these unpleasant side effects. Digestive, you said digestive problems there? Yep. I know we've covered it in one of the previous vlogs. We talked about comfort eating. Is that kind of linked up there, is it? A simple thing is, for example, you're stressed all the time and you might develop an ulcer, right? Because your stomach's churning, there's too much acid in it, uh, you were eating improperly. But that is just a, a very basic example of digestive problems that can be caused by excessive stress. We possibly know people who are constantly worried. And then lo and behold, they develop an ulcer and you think, well, what a surprise there, right? Um, cortisol, adrenaline, all the other chemicals, I'm going to use the word chemicals rather than neurotransmitters and all sorts of things, right, that are produced or stimulated by stress, which are good in the short term, keep us alert, free from danger, but bad in the long term because they have a, an, an actual negative effect on our bodies. And by suppressing the, our immune system, our natural ability to fight off diseases, illnesses, etc., cetera, um, the stress no longer is beneficial. It's actually bad for us. And I think most people are aware of that. Right? So they can cope with stress in the short term. Long term, it needs to be addressed. Great. So if I can summarise very briefly, my question was, can stress cause a common cold? You said yes. But there's two types of stresses. There's acute stress, short term, and chronic stress. That's correct. If I just differentiate between three, normal stress, we'll know about that. Acute stress is where the stress peaks for a short period. Chronic stress is where it peaks and stays peaked for a long period. Great. Fantastic. So there we go. Acute stress, chronic stress, they can cause a common cold. If you, the viewer, want to know more about the two types of stress, five answers to Wally. He, his door is open, his virtual door is open, sorry, not your physical door is open, Wally. Um, thank you for that, Wally. Great lot of information. Anything else you want to add, or is that you for this week? The only thing I would add is that I, I, I do some research uh, online and I copy and paste some links into a little Word document. If anybody would like that Word document with the links which can take them further to gain more information, by all means, get in touch. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, we'll finish there now, will I? So to the viewer, thank you for listening. Please go onto YouTube, subscribe to our channel. We need more likes there. More people subscribe on. Get the word out there. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn. Visit our website. We can even link up, put some links on that Wally can give to us, put in the website. So for me, it's goodbye. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Yes, goodbye for me, Wally the Taking a Dinosaur. I'll just repeat what uh, David says. Keep yourself safe, keep yourself well, and try and have a bit of fun at the same time. Goodbye for me. <laughs>